Hey guys, welcome into the Wells Tech Garage for this month's episode of Tech Connect. It's Friday, I hope everybody had a great week fixing cars. I'm gonna get right into it today because we got a ton of comments and questions from you guys. First and foremost out there, I saw a ton of feedback on the fact that I talked about our next class during our last class. I mentioned that, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're gonna be talking about oxygen sensors. And I got a lot of feedback and comments from you guys pertaining to that about being excited and wanting to learn about O2 sensors. Now, I already got the class ready to go for next week, but I was wondering what you guys are really looking forward to learning and knowing about. And if there's something in particular you wanna see, please share that with me and I'll look to add that into the class. Now, remember guys, I make these classes for you guys. You know, I, I make it for our audience. So if you want uh, to learn about something in particular, you know, maybe something that's always kind of troubled you or you always questioned, but you just never had time to uh, look into, let me know. I'll see about adding it to the next class. All right, so some awesome comments and questions from you guys. Uh, these are just related to the field trims class that we talked about during our last broadcast. Uh, Jim came on and said his intake air temp sensor is running 20 to 30 degrees warmer than actual air temp and that his long term is about a positive 16 on both banks on his 99 Suburban 5.7. Well, if we stop and think about this for a second, it makes sense, right? So we have our air rushing into the engine and the computer's reading it as being hotter than it actually is. Well, we know warmer air, warmer engine doesn't require as much fuel as a colder engine does, so it's going to run a little bit leaner. Okay, but again, that air is being falsely red, so it actually does require more fuel, and that's why our long term started to ratchet up and add fuel to that positive 16 number because our engine was running lean. So basically, an air intake sem temp sensor can cause a lean condition on your engine, Jim. So that 20 to 30 degrees, that could translate to a positive 16. It, it all depends on the vehicle. All right, <clears throat> this is a really interesting one. Dwight commented in saying, air entering the upstream, exhaust upstream of the O2 sensor. So we have air coming in after the combustion chamber. So after our combustion event inside the cylinder, we have air entering in after that, but before our oxygen sensor, will create a rich condition due to positive fuel trim numbers caused by the O2 sensor running lean. All right, interesting stuff here. So let's say you have air entering into the exhaust system after the whole combustion event just happened. The O2 sensor is going to respond as lean, and we're going to get into this in the next class. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. But uh, we have air entering upstream of the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor is going to react and say, our mixture is lean. We need to add fuel. So the fuel trims are going to dump all kinds of fuel into this engine to try and bring that mixture back to stoichiometric, or what it thinks is bringing that mixture back to stoichiometric. But in all reality, our whole combustion event here, our whole process was doing just fine. The O2 sensor is picking up all this false air coming into the exhaust and it's skewing the whole thing. So our engine is now running incredibly rich, probably puffing black smoke, all because an oxygen sensor is lying, uh, excuse me, it's not really lying to the computer, but it is getting false air either from a cracked manifold, a bad gasket, you know, maybe some broken manifold bolts, something like that. It's getting excess air into that exhaust stream. The sensor's picking it up and responding accurately, but it's causing the engine to run rich. So really, really great question or comment, Dwight. Um, that's some really interesting diagnostics and that can throw some people for a loop. Um, but we're gonna talk about how those O2 sensors and everything react in the next class. So if that didn't make sense, stay tuned for, uh, for our next class next week. All right, then we had Jurgen came out and he corrected something that I said, so thanks for looking out for me here again. I always want to make sure the information I get out to you guys is 100% accurate. And he corrected me when I had brought up the scan tool um, and showed the fuel trims on the screen and had them in the graphing mode. I had mentioned that we were showing 260 seconds worth of time. Well, Jurgen was nice enough to uh, correct that for me and what I had meant to say was it's 260 frames of time not necessarily 260 seconds. So again, thanks for looking out for me, Jurgen. I appreciate that. We had Scott come on, and Scott said that he's looking forward to the class on the tomato sensor. I've never heard it called that before, but it's a, it's a good analogy. You know, is it fruit or vegetable? Is it, is it reading fuel or oxygen? So he's talking about the oxygen sensor. He's looking forward to the class on the oxygen sensor, and Scott, I can guarantee you, if you watch the class on February 2nd, you'll have no question 
what that oxygen sensor is looking at it, whether it's fuel or whether it's air. <coughs> great, uh, great comment there. Now, I also had some interesting questions um, and comments, not exactly related to the field trim class in particular, but just some stuff that I pulled off of YouTube and actually off of a call in our tech department. So, ya Yakub Al Saudi, sorry if I mispronounce your name, commented in saying that he's got a 2010 Raptor and wants to check if the fuel pump can maintain max pressure and wants to know the wires to jump to do so. Well, being that this is a completely module controlled system, this has a fuel pump driver module, you know, it's all electronic, I don't really understand what the point is of trying to maintain max fuel pressure. I don't think it's going to create any sort of performance advantage for you at all. Um, unless you're able to get into the PCM and actually do some, some calibrating and fine tuning inside the PCM. Chances are what you're going to end up with is a check engine light and maybe even putting the thing into limp mode. Now remember, when we increase our fuel pressure, we talked about this for a rich condition in the fuel trims class, if we increase that fuel pressure and maintain the exact same pulse width or on time of the fuel injector, we're going to increase the amount of fuel that's going down into our cylinder. So our action sensor is going to read rich and the computer is going to react by trying to pull some of that away and lean the engine back out by shortening up our injector pulse width. So if you increase fuel pressure, really all you're going to do is reduce the longevity of the pump. It's not going to give you any sort of added performance benefit unless you're able to get into the PCM and tell it that you want it to run richer. So again, I don't really understand why you would want to maintain maximum fuel pressure, but uh, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea and that's I guess just my two cents unless you're able to get into the computer and program it to a richer, uh, richer mixture. But again, then your vehicle will not be emissions compliant. All right, another interesting thing I want to bring up is a phone call that we received on our tech line. Dave took a call on our tech line. Again, you guys can call this tech line. It's 1-800-558-9770, option one for the tech department. You know, we have our ASC Master Tech standing by uh, to help you with your diagnostics and that kind of thing, or to help you with parts that uh, you purchased. Um, anyways, this guy called up and Dave talked to him, and he was questioning a P160C, C as in Charlie, P160C on his uh, 66 Duramax diesel. And we found it kind of interesting. Dave did a little bit of research and digging on it and found that if you install a new glow plug control module on a, excuse me, glow plug control unit, a GPCU, on a 6.6 Duramax diesel that you have to program it with the fuel injector information out of the ECM. If you don't, if you don't do that programming, you get a check engine light on with a P160C as in Charlie. So there's nothing wrong with the GPCU, the glow plug control unit. It just has to be taught the fuel strategy out of the ECM. So again, nothing wrong with the part. It just needs some info programmed into it. So thought that was interesting and that doesn't only pertain to the 6.6 Duramax GPCU. Uh, we also see that uh, Ford Super Duty with the 6 liter. Uh, that glow plug um, module needs to be programmed. Um, so really, uh, really great comments and questions from you guys during the last broadcast and out on YouTube and stuff. And again, I always try to get out to YouTube and answer your stuff. But chances are, if one person's asking, there's going to be 10 or 20 or 100 other people that want to know. So keep up the comments and the questions, and we'll just keep sharing knowledge. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Sharing knowledge with each other to help each other's days go better when we're fixing cars. So let's talk about the next class. It is going to be on February 2nd, so next week, Thursday, February 2nd, 11 a.m. Central and 2 p.m. Central. We go live out on our website and on YouTube. We're going to be talking about oxygen sensor basics and how they relate to the fuel trim system on your vehicle, just how vital those sensors really are. So I hope to see you guys there for that, uh, to learn about oxygen sensors. And we're only going to be covering narrow band sensors in this class because there's just not enough time in one class to cover narrow band and wide band AFR, air fuel ratio sensors. So we're going to be just talking narrow band. Then our class in March, we're going to be talking about wide bands and AFRs. So I hope everybody had a great week fixing cars. It's Friday, let's celebrate. Um, if you guys have any cool stories from fixing cars from throughout the week, you know, share in a comment here, share it out on Facebook with us, you know, anything. We love to, we love to hear from you guys and share those stories. So again, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Up on the screen here, you'll see the little red 
circle with our name in it. Uh, go ahead, click that if you're not already subscribed. And uh, so thanks again for watching. I hope to see you guys February 2nd at 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. Central Time for our next class. Have a great weekend, everyone.